And joining me now is Denise Garlick, Democratic candidate for the 13th North Fork District State Representative seat. Denise, welcome to It's All Local. Well, thank you very much, Seth. So tell me a bit about yourself. I'm sure people at home watching know you, they're familiar with you, but for anybody who may not be, who is Denise Garlick? Denise Garlick is somebody who's working very hard for her family and in my profession and for my community mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. I'm the mom of four wonderful children who have grown up in Needham, my daughter Monica, Beth, Alex, and Andy. And in my profession, I am a working registered nurse. Mm -hmm. I've worked for many years in a variety of um, settings, 15 years at the Brigham, mm -hmm. and I've also worked with folks who are mentally ill mm -hmm. and the developmentally disabled. And currently, I'm the outreach nurse educator at Wellesley College. Mm -hmm. And in my community that I love, I have always done community service mm -hmm. with activities with my children, and then in the last decade, serving an elected public office in the town from the board of, from town meeting member to the board of health, mm -hmm. and currently I'm the vice chair of the board of selectmen. And now you're running for state representative. So I am. what made you decide to run? I'm running for state representative because I believe that the approximately 40,000 people of Needham, Dover, and Medfield, mm -hmm. who are children and seniors and families and young businesses, deserve a representative who has real life experience, who has a reputation of working hard, mm -hmm. and who has demonstrated real political courage. Mm -hmm. These are tough times, and I'm talking to as many people as I can, mm -hmm. and I share the concerns I'm hearing mm -hmm. about jobs and economic development, about health care cost containment, mm -hmm. about protecting and preserving our public education system. Mm -hmm. And I want to work hard on those issues and make a difference, like I've made a difference every day in my adult life for people I care about. What are some of those things that you would do if you're elected to state representative? I think the most important thing a state representative can do is articulate clearly what their goals are for the people of their community. Mm -hmm. Number one, my goal would be always to be the representative of the people of my community and their concerns. Mm -hmm. I am not a career politician, I'm a career nurse. Mm -hmm. So I've had the ability to be able to make decisions based on what the people I represent need mm -hmm. and not worry about ramifications on a political career. Mm -hmm. Those issues around health care cost containment, the goal on that is very important to make sure that the conversations we have on that reflect the goal, the mission of quality and access to care. I want to preserve the community hospitals. Mm -hmm. When we talk about economic development, it's about retaining and recruiting businesses and companies to Massachusetts mm -hmm. and creating new jobs. And when we talk about public education, which is a strong value mm -hmm. for the people in Needham and Dover and Medfield, it is making sure that given the strain of these economic times, mm -hmm. that we can preserve our local aid, that we can meet the needs of quality education, that we can preserve the class sizes that we know make a difference in education, and that we make sure that we have funding for the special ed circuit breaker so all of our children in the school system have what they need and we find balance in the budget in the school system. A lot of people talk about economic growth and development. Do you think it's difficult to do business in the Commonwealth? And if so, how would you change it if you're elected? I think the major goal of, economic, of jobs and economic development is to make the Commonwealth, to set the table so that businesses outside of the Commonwealth see that Massachusetts is a place that they can come and grow and have a firm foundation. Mm -hmm. I am the unanimously elected member of the Board of Selectmen to the Council on Economic Advisors, mm -hmm. and I have been working on a particular project down on the 128 Business Center, which is where Coca-Cola is. Mm -hmm. And in that area, we are talking to the people who are residents in that area, developers, current owners of the building, prospective owners, real estate folks, mm -hmm. And we're saying, and, and executives of companies that are related to life sciences and health sciences and green technology where we know the future is. And we're saying to them, what is it that would make this area the most desirable to you? And those four things turn out to be infrastructure improvements, that we look to incentives to bring companies and businesses here, mm -hmm. that we look to developing the amenities that park is actually situated on the river near good walkable trails, mm -hmm. and that there is a sense of branding mm -hmm. that we see this park as a good place. I think that's a, an example. It's just a small microcosm. I know it's need and related, mm -hmm. but I think it's exactly what we can do in the Commonwealth, and I think that's the way we move forward. 
One of the other things you've worked on here in Needham is the Senior Center. Yes. Where is that now? That's a, a big issue for you. You're passionate about it. Where are we on it? The Senior Center is a fascinating issue in this town. The town has worked on um, building a new building for the Senior Center for about 11 years. Mm -hmm. The truth is the seniors in town will tell you that we've been working on it for 25 <laughs> years. I, again, am the unanimously elected representative from the Board of Selectmen. I chair the Senior Center, co-chair the Senior Center Exploratory Committee. I'm also the elected representative to the PBBC mm -hmm. as, as the user group. The issue on the Senior Center has moved more in the two years under my leadership than it moved in the 11 years prior. Twice that effort has failed. Mm -hmm. We are at a point right now where it seems that there is um, a great deal of unrest about how we're going to make this decision, and that's because we're very close to making the recommendation to the Board of Selectmen. Mm -hmm. The process is we make the recommendation and the Board of Selectmen need to vote. Mm -hmm. The process has entailed um, two years of work covering the Castle Bull study, ca covering the Danisco study on every available parcel we have in the town, mm -hmm. which was ruled in or ruled out systematically. We then distributed a survey to 11,000 households. Mm -hmm. We have held six public hearings on this issue. We have issued not one, but two RFPs, which you know, Seth, is a request for proposal of any land we don't own mm -hmm. that might be available, a parcel of land that might be available to buy or lease. We have explored every possible um, venue for the senior center. Our recommendation will then um, talk about location, size, design, and cost. That's the charge to the committee. As we, on June 22nd, we had narrowed that to three sites. Mm -hmm. The selectmen then added an additional four sites after June 22nd. It would make it seem that it would, uh, that it would be very difficult to meet our timeline for offering a recommendation, but it does not. Mm -hmm. All it means is that we have to work harder. Mm -hmm. The Senior Center Exploratory Committee is meeting six times in the month of August, mm -hmm. and we will come forward with our recommendation because the Board of Selectmen opens the Special Town Warrant, their first meeting in September, mm -hmm. and they cl for the um, annual town meeting in November, and they close it mm -hmm. in their last meeting in September. Mm -hmm. And we need to have a placeholder in that warrant so the town meeting members have the right and the ability to vote on design monies for a senior center. And we will meet that deadline.